To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to another episode of Dissecting Minecraft. And I'm here with uh, with Methods as usual. And uh, yeah, I was thinking Methods. So uh, so I think the last few episodes I've kind of introduced us as uh, like partner in crime, that kind of thing. But this this week I thought maybe we could be the uh, the, the Romeo and Juliet of Minecraft. What do you think? If you truly are okay. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right. You so, said you're the nice looking guy anyway. I know, that's right. I'm, I'm, you're, the, you're the brains and, 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 and I'm, I'm the beauty. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this. So this week on Dissecting Minecraft, we are going to be looking at the comparator. So we've kind of teased you a little bit with a few bits and pieces of that over the last few episodes. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot to the comparator, so it deserves its own episode. And that's what we're going to do today. All right. But before we get into that, we've got some uh, got some challenges to look at. So let's get into that. So first of all, we've got my one, which is a bit sad. <laughs> Methods was just was just making fun of me. But this uh, is my uh, my super quick one that I just did because I had a, I only had a few minutes this week. Uh, but this one is going to show and hide a crafting table. So here we have a lamp that's powered, and if I flip this lever, it swaps it out for a crafting bench, and then we can flip it back, and it puts it back. So this uses um, w one of the things we showed last week. Um, the abrogate so it uh, the pistons will fire like alternately to show and hide uh, those two blocks so here we have basically the same circuit we showed last week where we have a locking comparator uh, locking uh, repeater so if i flip this lever you can see there's the locking comparator uh, repeater sorry <laughs> got comparators on the brain and uh, yeah basically the same circuit that we showed last week so uh, not not too much invention but i've got something working so i'm happy with that <laughs> at least but uh, let's move on to uh, to one of the submissions we got this week. So this one is from uh, Not Mad Matt, which came through on Reddit. Um, so do you want to talk about this one, Methods, or do you want me to take it? All right, I can talk us through it. Mm -hmm. So basically it's a pulse counter. So here where the button is, is our input, and it leads into those droppers here that are facing each other. Mm -hmm. And we have four items in the top. And as long as there's items in the top, nothing here will happen at all. So we can feed in first pulse, second pulse, third pulse. And once we feed in the fourth pulse, you will actually, this comparator here will turn off. It will trigger this lamp, which is our output. Mm -hmm. And it will also reset the whole thing. Right. So turn this here off. But down here, a clock gets activated. It pushes all items to the top again. The comparator detects that. Once it, once it turns off, it actually turns off the clock. Right. And that's it. I see. So you have an adjustable pulse counter. You can put nine sticks of items here and have hundreds of pulses coming in before anything oh. happens. And then once you reached the threshold, you get a signal. That's awesome. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks very much for that, Matt. That's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right. So with oh, that, and it also looks fully tileable. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nice and neat, and looks uh, looks pro. I mean, it doesn't quite look as pro as uh, as my one over here, of course. You know, um, you know, my wiring's pretty cool. Don't you think? <laughs> all right okay let's get over to the main event let's come and talk about comparators so we have a whole bunch of things set up over here and uh, yeah we're going to talk about this stuff uh, as as we normally do each week so we'll start off with the basics and uh, yeah we'll kind of move on from there all right so the main feature of comparators as we mentioned before is reading out the contents of inventories so for example here we have a normal chest i put one item in there and we will actually get an output of a signal strength of one, mm -hmm. telling us there's one item in there. Of course, this does not work with each item adds one signal strength. It takes the, the amount of items in here and takes a percentage of the mm -hmm. contents and the inventory slots. We will link this in the description. There's a nice little chart in, in on the wiki telling you exactly how many items convert to what signal strength with which what container. Mm -hmm. okay. The chest here has 27 slots. Dropper only has nine, the hopper only has five, so it varies from those. So there we have our... And so how does that work with like stackables versus non-stackables? Is there a difference there? So um, a single stackable item gives you one signal strength, and a non-stackable item will always give you three signal strength. Right. Okay. And it's also it's different with ender pearls and stuff that sticks to 16. That's also all in the wiki and it's nicely all listed. It's okay. just a bunch of numbers, basically. Okay, okay. So there we have our basic inventories here mm -hmm. twin, with the 27 nine slots. Then next we have the furnace. 
which technically has three slots it can detect. It will also detect all of those. We have the hopper, it will detect mm -hmm. all the slots. Yep. Then we have the daylight sensor next, which is our first special block. And it will give an output according to the time of the day. Right. Right now it's 15. Let's maybe set it to 12,000. Uh -huh. Yep. So now it's only seven. Yep. And there's another specialty the, the daylight sensor also has the night mode. So now it will only detect stuff at night. If you set this to 18,000 now, you get an output of 11. Right, I see. Yep. And depending on the daytime, it will just switch through. It's also a little bit weird because it has, we have 15 redstone stages, but the day takes 24,000 ticks. That's also on the wiki. Mm -hmm. You can read for every single daytime or well, nighttime. You can check what signal strength you get. Mm -hmm. Then next we have the cauldron. The cauldron is a bit special because it's movable and it also has three levels. So completely filled is redstone level three. Mm -hmm. And then we can bucket it out with water bottles as soon as I find them. Where are they? So if you take a water bottle, we can reduce to two I and see. to one. Right, all right. And the, the, then we have, and the, the when it comes to the cauldron, that's quite important as well because that's something that could be pushed with a piston. So that's exactly. why it's used in a, in contraptions quite a lot. Yep. So this, I think, the one of the few only blocks you can push and detect with a comparator mm -hmm. the contents of it. Mm -hmm. In 114, we got the composter on top. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much it. The next we have the jukebox. All it can do, it can detect if the jukebox has a disc or not. Okay, yep. Then we have the end portal frame. Same deal. It can only detect if it has an eye of ender or not. It's kind of useless for survival. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, chest mine cards and hopper mine cards. Those can also be detected by comparators, but specialty, you need a detector rail to uh, do right. this. Yes. So as you can see now, if we would put a repeater here, it would always be powered because the detector rail is giving power. But with the detector rail and the card, it's for the comparator, it's different. Right. It will only output if actually something is in my card. And that's the same for hopper mine cards as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Then we have the cake. The yeah, cake has the specialty that when it's a full cake, it gives you a redstone level of 14. Oh. That sounds odd. I would, have, I would expect that to be 15. Yeah, but it's kind of practical. Sometimes you need 14. Uh -huh. And that's just how it works. I think it has seven slices. Oh, right. Okay. It's also one of the reasons. And then lastly, we have the item frame, which depending on the rotation of the item, mm -hmm. it will give you according signal strength. So the basic standard rotation facing upwards is signal strength one. It can go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. and one again. That's a one. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And I think this should have been all the stuff that can be detected by a comparator. I probably forgot one or two. Let us uh -huh. know in the comments. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there'd be some that we've forgotten. And then the other thing just over here was that uh, uh, comparators can read through a block as well, not necessarily just against uh, the item itself, right? Exactly. There's a few exceptions where this doesn't work. Uh -huh. And I think that's the cake, the chest card. And yeah. Obviously, the, the item frame, because yep. it already is through a block. Yep. But you could technically detect it. Not like, ah, I'm oh, breaking you, so. you broke it. <laughs> so. <laughs> could okay. technically read it out from here. Frame. No, actually, you can't. Oh, you can't. Oh, so there you we go. have to learn something today as well. <laughs> okay, so it has to be for a block from behind. With the okay. frame, it's special. It's just some special restrictions too. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. All right, great. Okay, and then the second big feature of the comparator is like we know for the repeater, for example, it always, once a signal goes through a repeater, it will strengthen the signal again up to full power 15. Mm -hmm. The comparator does actually not do that. It carries on the signal strength. Right. So if you send power 15 through, of course, we will get power 15 at the end. But if we send power 14 through, you will also get power 14 at the end. Right, I see. And here are just some more ways of wiring this more efficiently with less comparators. Uh -huh. So of course, you can always give it a block of space because it won't lose any power here in one block. And you can also 
use a block and a dot and a block again to make it even more cheap. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. That's re that's really useful. Pretty good. And then we have a few more specialties about comparators. Mm -hmm. So if you have a here, we detect a cauldron through a block, mm -hmm. and a comparator detects that. And if we actually remove this cauldron, the comparator will not update. Ah. So as you can see now, it's still being powered, but it yeah, actually yeah. does not have anything behind it. <laughs> so if we now place a block here, it will actually turn off. You can also make a butt switch with this, for example, uh -huh. or even a comparator update detector. But the other specialty is if we actually push the power source there, it will correctly up. Right, so updates on the on when it's receiving the power, but not when it's removing the power. Right. Exactly. Okay. So now we should go here to the two other main features of the comparator. <laughs> I know it has a lot, but it's a really useful block too. Yeah, yeah. So here we have the comparator just based in a standard mode. Mm -hmm. And as we learned, it will carry on the signal strength. But we have a second input for the comparator here. And right now it's in compare mode. Right. So right now we're sending in signal strength 14. Yes, so 14 goes into the back with the, with the two. And what the does two compare mode do? It mm -hmm. compares the output to the compare mode input here, output B. And it will only carry on with the signal if the input here is bigger than the compare. Input. Right. So right now we're putting in power 14. Yep. And now I will compare it to power 50. Right. And there we go. It's off. And it will only turn on if the compare mode is 14 or lower. Right. So if the power going into the side is greater than the power going into the, into the back, I'll call it the back, then uh, it doesn't go forward. But if the power on the side is less than, then the power goes all the way through. Equal or less. Equal or less. Right. The power goes all the way through. But if this... But the, the power that goes through is whatever goes into the back. So this, this one, the power that goes into the side is like a, almost like a, a locking mechanism, if you like. It doesn't affect the power that goes out the front. Nope. It only compares it to it and okay. says, okay, you're bigger, you can go through, you're okay. smaller. You right. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Yep. So let's just do it one more time. If we mm -hmm. compare it to signal strength 15, yep. comparator will shut off. Yes. If we compare it to 14 or lower, it will actually yeah, output 14. Okay. And then the other special mode the comparator has is if you click the little notch here, mm -hmm. it goes into subtract mode. Right. So what does subtract mode do? Let's send power 15 through the comparator mm -hmm. and subtract 14. You get one. Right. So you can do some maths yeah. with this. So that should have pretty much made it clear what the subtract mode does. Mm -hmm. Instead of comparing the two inputs, now we subtract the main input from the subtract input. Right. So we're sending 15 through, we're subtracting 11, we have four left. Right, yeah, so 15 in, 11 in the side. 15 take away 11 is four, yeah, is four, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, then one more thing about both modes here. As we can see here, the comparator has an input on both sides. Mm -hmm. And always the stronger input takes priority. Right. So if we subtract 15 here, it takes zero. Yep. And if we subtract 14 here, nothing. So right. always the stronger input is okay. always the one that goes through, and the lower one is always ignored. OK, that's good to know. That's something new. I, did, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> awesome. OK, then over here, I've prepared a bit more stuff. So mm -hmm. how can we compare or subtract from the comparators? We can use comparators to feed into the side of a comparator. We can use repeaters. We can use dust. Mm -hmm. And we can use the redstone block as a permanent power source. Right, and redstone block would be power 15, right? Yep. And for everything else you want to feed in there, you would mostly use the comparator, because mm -hmm. you could just put a cauldron, for example, here. Right and then fill it with water, and it would lock the repeater with three redstone levels down to 12. OK, and that's the basic usage of the comparator already. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it, but you can do a lot with it. Yeah, I was just going to say there's stuff. I was just going to say there's a lot of there's a lot of flexibility there. And I can imagine com uh, combining multiple uh, comparators together and also with the other components, you can build some pretty complex things. Yep, up to computers in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. 
So the homework is going to be to build a computer, right? Yeah, I need a new computer for Cycler. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will see. Okay. So I'm just going to start it off easy with the pretty much most well-known use for the comparator, which is mm -hmm. your standard item sorter. Mm -hmm. So if you look here up in the chest, we always have three redstone dust, three pistons. Mm -hmm. The hopper below it has 41 redstone dust. Mm -hmm. and the other slots are all filled with a dummy item. Mm -hmm. And as soon as one more item will enter this hopper here, it will turn into signal strength three by the comparator, yep. which unlocks the hopper below and just lets that item through. Right, and so... since we prepared the stacks here in this way, only redstone dust can ever go in. So if I remove this redstone block here, you will see all the redstone flows out, the rest stays open. And we've successfully filtered. Right, I see. Let's stop. Okay, so the next very basic usage for comparators is a pulse extender. Right. So here we feed a four game tick pulse mm -hmm. into this little contraption here. Let's just do it as a showcase. Yep. And I would say we freeze the game or slow it down dramatically. Okay. Let's do tick rate five, maybe. Okay, so we now and have watch... five TPS instead of 20. Yep. Okay. So the game runs four times slower. Mm -hmm. So now we feed in a four game tick pulse into this block here, which after two game ticks, the comparator lights up as well. Mm -hmm. And then two game ticks later, the pulse here is gone. And then this thing basically starts working here. It outputs a power of 15. Yep. Then here it turns into 14 and here's 13. And then the comparator can read it again as 13. Right. It puts out 13 here, 12, 11. Right. So, so if I now just the, click this. So it goes in the loop around. The signal strength looping around going always two down. Right. And it's going two down at a time because there's two blocks after the comparator. Exactly. Okay. All right, that makes sense. And it takes 18 game ticks if you feed in a four game ticks. Of course, it depends how long the pulses you feed in here because mm -hmm. as long as this here stays lit, nothing will happen with the comparator. Right, okay. Okay. So every extra tick of delay you add here on the repeater is two more game ticks to the delay here. Okay, yeah, I see. Yep, that makes and sense. And it also, of course, varies where you take the output to. Mm -hmm. So, of course, this block here turns off the earliest. And this one here is the last one that fully turns off because it's closer to the comparator. Right. So it has signal strength zero here. It still has one here and two there. Yes, yes. So if you wanted it to be like a 16... If you want it to be sixteen game uh, game ticks, you take it out from here with a uh, from from here with the uh, in front of the comparator. No, sorry, twenty. If you want it to be twenty, sorry, you take it out from in front of the comparator, right? That's two yep. two game ticks yeah, after. Yeah, lower is not quite possible with one comparator. Yeah, you would yeah, just yeah. feed in. You wouldn't feed in signal strength fifteen. Mm, you would mm. feed in fourteen, for example. Mm. And then that would work. Okay. Yep. So there's always two ways to manipulating those. You can use more comparators, as we will do here, for example. Or you could f manipulate the signal strength you actually feed into it. Right. So here's basically the exact same thing. Just we use two comparators uh -huh. to loop it around. So if we click this, it will just be twice as long. Actually, a little bit less. See? Okay. And that, that's and longer because be... that's longer because the extra comparator gives you an extra couple of game ticks of delay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. It takes basically twice as long to decrease mm -hmm. for each step. It takes four game ticks to go down two signal strength. Of course, and right. It takes two game ticks to go down two signal strength. Okay. So of course, because the because the redstone dust is obviously instant, the only other way to affect the time is to add more components. So in this case, we've got the two two comparators rather than one. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. And now I would turn the tick rate to normal again and actually freeze the game. Mm -hmm. And now this here, now we want to go tick step six forward. Okay. You can see this here light up. Yep. Now we can go in steps of two game ticks forward. So mm -hmm. two game ticks, this turns on. Yep. Two more game ticks, this turns on. Mm -hmm. And now here we can see the first comparator outputs 15. This mm -hmm. outputs 14. 14. Yep. Carries the 14 over and yep. then here into 13. Right, so we've gone down to two power levels. Exactly. And now every four game ticks, we will go down two more points. Right. See, yes. I think that should be enough. Let's unfreeze the game again and let mm -hmm. it run. 
say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And here we have a basically exactly the same thing. The only difference is we add one block here. Right. And what does that do? Now we don't decrease the power level by two steps every time. We de only decrease it by one step. Ah. And therefore, by just adding this block here, this thing is exactly twice as long. Oh, wow. So as you've seen here, we output 15 here, and it turns yeah. to 14. 14 there, right, of course. And then 14 here, and to 13 here. But right. as we add this block here, yeah. we actually output 15 here. 15 here, instead and of there. Therefore, we get 15 right. here, and 14 here. Oh, therefore, yes. basically decrease one time less. So this always went from, from 15 to 13, from 13 to 11, and this will go from 15 to 0. Right, Maybe. that was that, that was like a real light bulb moment. <laughs> Slow down the game again so we can see it a bit better. Uh -huh. This goes through every single signal strength. Amazing. I think the good thing about seeing it this slow is it really kind of brings home what's what's happening. So a lot of the time I've seen this stuff before, um, but it's always been, I wouldn't say like a total mystery, but it's been a little bit like, not really sure exactly what's happening, but now you can slow it, this it game down. Too we can fast see it. Yeah, without exactly. slowing down the game. Yeah, and if it's going if it's going too fast, it's hard to it's hard to comprehend unless you really understand it. But now I've seen it like that. Yeah, really good, really good. And here we have the exact same thing again, just twice as big. It's mm -hmm. basically just here to show one more thing, mm -hmm. and that is the input pulse it needs to be just as long as all these comparators add delay wise. Okay. So here we add. We have four comparators, they cause eight game ticks of delay, mm -hmm. and we feed in an eight game tick mm -hmm. pulse as well. Right. Let's up the tick rate again, just so this goes a bit faster. And this would work, and if we reduced the pulse length, then this would just make. So as you can see, it blinked twice and then it started doing mm -hmm. it, so that's why you don't want it this. Okay. This would just make a uh, almost makes a clock, right? And with this, you can pretty much make those arbitrary long, as long as you have render distance available and make really long <laughs> simple clocks. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine a render distance uh, comparator clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or pulse extender, should I say? Yeah. But you can make also different clocks with those. So those use the compare mode, mm -hmm. standard settings. Mm -hmm. But we, I think we've shown this in the second episode here. The most basic or the third episode the most basic clock in minecraft so here it's right. the same deal i'm going to mm -hmm. slow down the game again so we can see this the it gets power 15 into there yep outputs for power 15 here yeah so power 14, 14 here power 13. 13 here right and since it's in subtract mode it subtracts 13 from the 15 that come right. in and, and then only two are left over, and those uh, two only power the first redstone dot here and the second one, mm, but not the third one. And therefore, this starts clocking itself. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, that's so cool to see that that speed. Can I make it even slower? Maybe let's do this. Right. So the fifteen goes in the back, which gives us fifteen at the front, then fourteen over here, thirteen here, and then we're we're subtracting thirteen away from fifteen which gives us this two right here and then one and then zero. And then because there's zero going into here, we then get back to 15 again. And then it just keeps that cycle going. That gives us that clock. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. The only Amazing. thing you should keep in mind, if you want to take an output, you actually have to take it here because only here you start turning to zero. Right, yes. If you want something to go on and off, mm -hmm. this would not work here, for example. This repeater would just always be on. Mm. And here it actually goes off and therefore it also turns on. Right. Okay, and then here we have a little bit of a different version from it. This is also not necessarily a subtraction mode clock, but this is a so-called fade-out clock. Okay. So all this does pretty much, it's the same circuit as here. Mm -hmm. Behind you. Sorry, yep. But if it turns off, it actually has a component that lights it up again. So uh -huh. here we have the exact same thing. We've sent the pulse around, it decreases all the time, and once it's fully off, this torch here will actually turn on and relight the circuit. If we turn this off, see it's decreasing. Mm -hmm. and now, plop, the torch goes on, lights it up again, and it starts over. Oh, I see. Right. So the so the this this comparator that goes into the back of the torch block obviously depowers it. And so when that 
when that uh, comparator doesn't have uh, power coming out of it, the torch lights up, which lights this line up, which lights this comparator up, and it goes back into the, yeah, I see, okay. And then here we have a different version that's using the same deal. It's just no redstone dust. We just took one here as output so we can see it. Mm -hmm. So what do we do here? We basically send a pulse here around in those four comparators. And every time it passes this comparator here, we subtract one, one signal strength. Right. So we send in signal strength 15. It goes here through this comparator, it turns into 14, goes through it again, it turns into 13, and so on. So if I put dust just on top, I would be able to see, see those. Exactly. Okay. And then once it's completely off, mm -hmm. this comparator here will stop locking this one. Mm -hmm. As we learned about the locking, it's actually comparing it to it. Mm -hmm. And as soon as this is zero, it will here output a signal and start all over. I see, yes. And we're just using these, the, these droppers here as a convenient way to get a signal strength of one going into the exactly. back of these comparators. Exactly, you can use a chest with one item, or mm -hmm. a hopper with one item, or a cake with one slice. Sure, sure. An item frame, whatever, whatever you can find. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is the basics of fade-out clocks you can Very nice. Okay. Then back here we have another interesting little thing, mm -hmm. and that's a signal strength counter. Signal so strength watch counter. the lamps. Every time I click the note block, ah. we get one more signal strength. And every time I click it over here, it goes down. <laughs> get one less. Okay, so what's happening here then? That looks pretty cool. So here we have basically two droppers. Mm -hmm. One of them is completely filled with items. Right, yes. And it's getting detected by a comparator which right. outputs a signal strength of 15, 15 yes. putting into, turning into this comparator here. So once we click the button, we will move one item over into the other dropper, turning this to 14. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this can actually quickly output a signal here, because it's no longer outputting 15 subtracted by 15, which is 0. It's then 14. Right. And therefore, it can output the signal strength of 1. 1 there, and then you get 1 of it. OK, yes, I see and that. And since it locks each other, it will also keep this on one. So if we do this here, we can see this redstone dust here is permanently on one now. Yes. We do it again. It's permanently on two. And permanently on three. And so on. And then if you mirror it or, and flip it around, you can just do it the exact same thing. Yeah. By inputting to the other side, you can decrease it. So, well, I've got a question. This, so this, this dropper, still has all the items in. Still they has flow full. back. It's they basically, flow. you just need the pulse for a short moment. Ah, so the pulse, so when we press, so this is, that's full, that's empty. Give that a pulse, that goes to 14. Uh, but it doesn't update when the, when the item flows back in. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's basically, it's, it's getting locked. It does update, but it's getting subtracted by one here. Right ah. from the side. So the other comparator is now subtracting oh, right. from this here, which so, is still 15. Oh, uh, I just broke it. Let's reset it. Here's a reset button, by the way. <laughs> okay. So basically, this very shortly turns into power 14. Yes. Which then allows this comparator here to output something, which would be 15, but it's minus 14. So it only outputs one. Right, of course. Which yeah. then subtracts from this comparator here right. one. And therefore, it can only output power 14. Right, and, and this way we can actually right. trickle, uh, trickle up the, the signal strength. Even though both both here are always full and have always 15 in. Right, I see. Yeah. That's, that is smart. That is very smart. Right, okay. I, I, I get it. I get it. Sorry. <laughs> that was a silly question, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer, ask all those silly questions that, um, that uh, you know, people might be afraid to. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, nice one. Very good, very good. And over here we have a sort of similar little thing. Mm -hmm. We have here our basic pulse extender. And here we have our basic uh, subtract mode clock. Mm -hmm. And they're both co interconnected. And here we actually use the signal strength to get a certain amount of pulses. Okay. 
So over here, we have the signal strength 15. We feed signal strength 15 into this clock mm -hmm. and we will get 15 pulses. We have prepared a little chest, just a dropper that pushes items into them. Now it's 15. I see, right. And over here, we can start feeding in 14. 14 items. Yep. And then let's do maybe just one. That actually gives five because it's one. <laughs> it's not it's not five. It's stupid. It's ten. It's ten, okay. So it's it's actually five. Okay. It's thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, and so on. So here we can do another one. It's just a pulse multiplier. So with the signal strength manipulation, you can exactly say I want a clock that I trigger it the first time, it gives me ten pulses, the second time it gives me eight, and uh -huh. whatever you want to do, you can do it with something like this. Set that out there. So this one over here. So if I do this one, that's let me see if I just 14. walk this through. So this is this is going to give me four, is that fourteen or fifteen. That's fourteen here, right? Because it it goes in here, but then it has to go through this comparator, puts out fifteen oh, here, and fourteen, 14. here, oh, right? Yes, goes into this comparator and then powers the clock. Right. So oh, that's why the fifteen is here. Oh, fifteen is it? Right. That's fifteen. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So fifteen is there. That's fourteen. Okay. So that goes in, so then we get 14 into here, into this block, which goes into here, into here. Uh, and then that gives us 14 here, and 13 this one, which goes back into here, and that loops around that many times. And then obviously powers this dropper at the same time, which yeah, puts the items into here. So that's how you get, so it's the, yeah, okay, I see. So the, because of the, the power of the, the power of the strength, the, the strength of the, of the signal that goes in, degrades that many times and that's why we get the items okay yeah okay that makes sense yeah yeah okay and then over here we have a, another very basic use that's probably everyone knows and it's just a combo lock mm -hmm. so this door will only open in this configuration here of item frames if i switch any of those door is closed right yep and now we just have to lick it proper again and how does this work maybe we just for the sake of the video, I'm going to grief it a little bit. So let's remove this and just look at a single slice here. Mm -hmm. This one over here. So if we just set it to something, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. we have too much power here, which will actually power this line. Right. And if we have too less power here, then actually this torch will turn on, also powering this line. Right. So the only way this line can turn off if it's at the exact correct setting. Right. So this way the repeater is not on and the torch is also off. Right, I see. And you can chain those together and simply make a combo lock. So all I, all I did here basically was put a repeater here to the output and uh -huh. put the next module connected to it. Right, so you just connect those up, right. At the very end, this redstone line here at the bottom goes into your door. Right, and then has a yeah. and has a has this has the torch to invert it. So as long as you're not getting any signal out of any of the lines, then the the, the, the torch to invert it was just there. Otherwise, the door would be open. But be open. Do, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. All right, good stuff. Yeah, that makes and sense. It's everything for comparators. Wow, the comparator. What a, what an amazing what an amazing block. <laughs> but there's much more you can you can do with it than just this what we showed today. Mm -hmm. This is this is uh, this is just 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 a, a, another tease for uh, for what's going to come. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, do we have a do we have a challenge for the uh, for the viewers uh, this week? Uh, yeah, we do. So, if you want to show us other ways of making a combo lock, mm. it could doesn't have to be item frames. You can also do this with buttons mm -hmm. or general signal strength. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess we should call it signal strength because it will involve comparators, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what we what we're all going to do with them anyway. Yeah, yeah. So so basically some some kind of security system, some kind of way to open and close a door using comparators. And so this so the idea here is that if you're a bit newer to my, to uh, to uh, the redstone, you know, you could do something a bit simpler, uh, but if you are, you know, uh, quite experienced, then you can go nuts and make something pretty crazy, I reckon. Just so, a, just another little tip, it doesn't have to be a combo lock like this here. It could also be a container where you put a certain item into it and uh -huh. the comparator can filter this item and detect hey right it's item a 
door open, it's sure. item B not open. There's many, many ways of doing this. Be creative about it. Okay, so to be creative, a way to open and close a door using comparators and uh, yeah, you can uh, be be uh, be be uh, creative. All right, sounds really good. And that is about it for another episode of Dissecting Minecraft. So thanks again, Methods, for uh, for teaching us all about the comparator. Uh, that was uh, that was amazing. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, or if there's anything we've left out, then get it in that comment section. All right, my geeks. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.